Hi, I'm Brian from Sweet Bros Games, and I'm here to teach you how to play zombie chickens. In the competitive version of the game, you win by not dying. That's right, the winner is the last farmer standing. First, let's look at the three types of cards. Day cards include fun, strategic ways to defend your farm from zombie attacks. Night cards include monstrous zombie chickens, as well as surprise events that can change the course of your game. And finally, life cards represent how many lives you have left before you're out of the game. In Zombie Chickens, players take turns building defenses during the day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, and then defending against zombies at night. Let's review the day cards. Remember, these are the defenses you can place on your farm. Each card has helpful info, like whether you can only use it once or if it requires any other cards to make it work. For example, the flamethrower requires fuel, so you can't use it until you have a stack with both a flamethrower and a fuel on your farm. Now, let's look at some night cards. Each type of zombie has different traits that allow them to overcome certain defenses, or possibly make them vulnerable to others. To help while you're learning, the day cards tell you at the bottom what their weaknesses are. For example, since this biter is fireproof, your flamethrower stack can't stop it. But a flamethrower stack can stop this crawler since it isn't fireproof. To set up the game, shuffle the day cards and deal five to each player. Place the remaining day cards face down near the center of the table to form the day deck and flip over the top two cards. Next, shuffle the night cards and place them face down to form the night deck. Finally, give life cards to each player. In two player games, each player receives five life cards. In three or four player games, each player receives four life cards. Leave room to the side where everyone can discard cards during the game. Each player should also have space in front of them for their farm, where they'll place defenses during the day. Pick a player to go first and proceed clockwise around the table. The game starts in the morning of day one. Beginning with the first player, each player takes their morning turn. Day consists of three actions, discard, place, and draw. One, discard one card. This is optional. If you choose to discard a card, place it in the day discard pile and draw a new one from the day deck. The new card goes in your hand. Two, place two cards. Choose two cards from your hand and place them on your farm as defenses. Three, draw two cards. A day turn ends when you draw two cards to put in your hand. You can choose either the two face-up cards or the top two cards from the day deck. Players should always have five cards in their hand when they end a turn. Once all players complete their morning turn, player one begins their afternoon turn. The steps for the afternoon are the same as the morning. This gives all players one more opportunity to discard one card, place two cards, and draw two cards before night begins. At the beginning of each night, players are dealt a specific number of night cards face down. On night one, each player receives one night card. On night two, each player receives two night cards. This pattern continues, three on night three, four on night four, and so on. Player one begins by flipping over one night card. At this point, the player must either defeat the zombie shown on the card or lose one life card. To defeat a zombie, you must have a defense on your farm that's able to stop it. You can't use any cards in your hand during the night. As mentioned before, each zombie has one or more traits that affect which day cards can defeat it. For example, a flying zombie can't be stopped by hay walls and booby traps since it'll just fly over them. Also, a bulletproof zombie can't be stopped by a shotgun. You get the idea. There are two zombie traits that work a little differently from the others. The timid trait is actually a weakness in the zombie that allows you to stop it if you have a scarecrow on your farm. The exploding trait is destructive. Zombies with the exploding trait destroy whatever card stack is used to stop it. So be strategic in how you handle these zombies. Let's play through a few examples to demonstrate how night turns work. Imagine Karis flips over a night card to reveal a zombie with the invisible trait. She can't stop that zombie with a shotgun or a flamethrower because those defenses can't stop invisible zombies. Fortunately, she has a hay wall, so she can stop it with that. She discards the zombie into the night discard pile. Play then continues to the next player. Next, Zion flips over a zombie with the flying and fireproof traits. These traits mean he can't stop it with a hay wall, booby trap, or a flamethrower. He does have a stack containing a shotgun and two ammo though, so he uses that to blast the zombie. Since ammo is a one-time use card, he discards one ammo card. The defeated zombie is also discarded. Play continues to the next player. 
Elisa then flips over a night card to reveal a zombie with the flying, timid, and exploding traits. Therefore, she can't stop it with a hay wall or a booby trap. She does have a shotgun stack with three ammo, so she could use that to stop it. But since it's an exploding zombie, that would destroy her entire four card shotgun stack. Fortunately, she also has a scarecrow. Since the zombie is timid, she uses her scarecrow to stop it. But remember, it's also exploding, so she has to discard the scarecrow she used to stop it. Both cards are discarded and play continues to the next player. Finally, Jackson flips over a night card to reveal a zombie with the invisible trait. He only has a loaded shotgun and a flamethrower on his farm. Since neither of those can defeat an invisible zombie, it sneaks past his defenses, forcing Jackson to discard one life card along with the zombie. Remember that besides zombies, the night deck also contains events that affect all players in the game. When an event card is drawn, everyone must follow the instructions on the card. Play then continues to the next player. Players take turns flipping over one night card at a time. After all night cards are dealt with, surviving players breathe a sigh of relief and begin rebuilding their farms in the morning of the next day. Let's talk about card stacks. As mentioned before, day cards are placed in separate stacks on your farm. A stack can be just one card or a group of cards that must be used together. If a card doesn't require other cards to be used, then it should be placed in its own stack. And since exploding zombies destroy the entire stack that's used to stop it, you might want to avoid placing all your ammo on just one shotgun stack. This way, if you use a shotgun stack to defeat an exploding zombie, you'll still have another loaded shotgun for other zombies. Feel free to rearrange your card stacks if it's your turn during the day. However, cards on your farm cannot be rearranged at night. In summary, Zombie Chickens follows a simple day and night cycle where every day each player gets two turns to build defenses on their farm before the next night begins. When night begins, the number of night cards dealt to each player corresponds with the night you're on. The game ends when all players have died except one. The last farmer standing oh, yeah. is the winner and sole survivor of the Bokpocalypse. To keep the game fair, all players should have the same number of turns. For example, in a two-player game, if player one dies on the second card of night five, player two should also play through their second card of night five in case they tie by dying at the same point in the game. If there is a tie, the winner is the tying player who has the most cards left on their farm. If it's still a tie, then no player is the winner and instead the zombies win. And that's how you play the competitive version of Zombie Chickens. Don't forget, there are also co-op and solo versions of the game. Instructions for these, as well as more helpful info on how to play, can be found in the written instructions and FAQs at zombiechickensgame.com. Good luck, and may the best zombie slayer win. In this dark night, it's too hard for me to say now. If the rays of hope shine again someday And if I might be spared as the tempest starts to swell At this point it's just too dark to tell